Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How is everyone doing? So this morning, we're going back into Colossians 2, 6. So walk ye in him. And you guys know that verse. We literally just covered it. We just covered it in its uh, in its entirety. So I'm going to skip reading the verses because we literally just did it. And we'll go right into the devotion. If we have received Christ himself in our inmost hearts, our new life will manifest its intimate acquaintance with him by a walk of faith in him. Evidence of salvation again. There's going to be something different about you and it's going to manifest externally. Our walk, our life we live is going to manifest the changes happening within us. We can't help it. You know, and when I talk about evidence of salvation, you know, everybody looks at that as being like like a like a polar topic. It stands all by itself, but there's an altar to that topic. What about evidence of no salvation? <laughs> Somebody has a pro prof a problem with evidence of salvation, and then you can ask them, okay, um, what are the evidences of someone with no salvation? And if they're not paying attention, they'll start to list off stuff. And then you ask them, okay, so if you have no problem with evidence of no salvation, why do you have a problem problem with evidence of salvation? What's the evidence? I'll give you just a couple. What's the evidence of no salvation? No faith in Christ. No life lived for him. What's the evidence of salvation? Faith in Christ. A live life lived for him. We don't have to get super specific. It's really easy. But people have a really terrible problem with that. Probably because it strikes guilt in their heart. Because they know they don't have it. Change it. Change it. Anyone listening who has a problem with this, change what's going on. Change your mind. Repentance. Literal. Change your mind. And walk in a way that glorifies God. If we have received Christ himself in our inmost hearts, our new life will manifest its, its intimate acquaintance with him by a walk of faith in him. Walking implies action, how we live. Our religion is not to be confined to our closet. We must carry out into practical effect that which we believe. If a man walks in Christ, then he so acts as Christ would act. For Christ being in him, his hope, his love, his joy, his life, he is the reflex of the image of Jesus. And men say of that man, he is like his master. He lives like Jesus Christ. Walking signifies progress. So walk ye in him. Proceed from grace to grace. Run forward until you reach the uttermost degree of knowledge that a man can attain concerning our beloved. You can see clearly this guy here that wrote this devotion. He understands. He gets it. It's got to be an external manifestation of what's going on inside you. That's what baptism is. It's an external act signifying the internal change within you. Walking implies continuance. There must be a perpetual abiding in Christ. How many Christians think that in the morning and evening they ought to come into the company of Jesus and may then give their hearts to the world all the day? But this is poor living. We should always be with him, treading in his steps and doing his will. Walking also implies habit. When we speak of a man's walk in conversation, we mean his habits, the constant tenor of his life. Now, if we sometimes enjoy Christ and then forget him, <coughs> sometimes call him ours and anon lose our hold, this is not a habit. We do not walk in him. Now, let me help you with a, a term used in the Bible. It's called workers of iniquity. This is somebody who makes it a habit to sin. A worker of righteousness is somebody who makes it a habit to work righteousness, a habit to follow Christ, a habit to do the right thing. You can see clearly the, the difference between the two people. And there are no middle ground people. There's You're either a believer or you're an unbeliever. There are a lot of people who are sitting in church, going to church, and doing, playing the role of being a Christian that are not saved. They have not gone into the sheepfold. They sit just outside. 
They love to listen. They love to hear it. I, I know people that are like that. I just love to listen to you. See, I don't do this stuff in front of anybody anymore. I used to. I love listening to you do that. But then why don't you respond to it? But they wouldn't hear it. They would come in there while I was trying to film and make noise and stuff like that. Those of you that have been with, been with me for a while saw those videos and heard the noises they made. Some people are just riding the roller coaster. Not realizing that the track is broken at the end for where they're going. We must keep to him, cling to him, never let him go, but live and have our being in him. As ye have received Christ Jesus, the Lord, so walk ye in him. Persevere in the same way in which ye have begun. And as at the first, Christ Jesus was the trust of your faith, the source of your life, the principle of your action, and the joy of your spirit, so let him be the same till life's end. The same when you walk through the valley of the shadow of death and enter into the joy and the rest which remain for the people of God. O oh, Holy Spirit, enable us to obey this heavenly precept. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. This can be hard. Because we may look at ourselves and have a hard time finding those things. Well, here's an easy way to tell whether we're doing what we should do or even walking the direction we should be walking. The Bible gives in the New Testament, there's two notable places where it gives the qualities or the attributes of the Holy Spirit. Read them. Do you see them in your own life? And be honest with yourself. Look at your look back at your life before you were a believer and look at your life now. Do you see any difference? Be honest with yourself. Where are your thoughts most of the time? throughout the day, because we're not always reading the Bible. We're not always, you know, specifically engaged in stuff that, that is um, attributed to the Lord. But where are your thoughts in those times? There should be a difference. We're not going to do it perfect. Don't get me wrong. Don't misunderstand. We're not going to do it perfect. But we should be able to tell a difference between who we were and who we are. Because if we're in Christ, we should walk in him. We should walk in his ways to the best of our ability. Now, we may not have much of a, much ability. In fact, most of us have no, almost no ability. But we do what we can. The Lord leads us the rest of the way. And the Holy Spirit teaches us and guides us and watches over us for the rest of it that we're, we fall short on. Some of us are going to fall short on getting it right. But that's where Jesus finishes the work he started in us on the day of redemption. We're not going to get it 100% right. The fact is, if we know the truth, we should be walking in it. If we know what we should do, we should be doing it. What does the Bible tell us to do? Be a doer of the word. What does the word tell us to do? You got to go read it. You got to go read it and find out. And then you act on that. And you do it with discernment. And you do it with decision making. You do it with a proper understanding. And that comes from studying the word, looking at what it says. I literally just heard... A minute ago, I haven't finished listening to it yet from Prophecy Watchers. Uh, they have Ken Johnson on. Ken Johnson's a great, great Bible teacher. And he's sharing some of the things I've told you guys. He's sharing that in the in the most re their most recent video about the people. Um, the rapture is going to be a, a, an awakening uh, of repentance in people because that's where the great multitude is going to come from because of the rapture. They're going to realize we just made a mistake. Revelation chapter 6, and what do they say in the sixth seal? Fall on us, the rocks, and went fall on us and hide us from the face of the Lamb, for the day of his wrath has come. Unbelievers don't know that. People who know what the Bible says know that. People who are aware of the truth know that. And that would be people who are real close, but they didn't cross over. That's where, that's where they're going to end up. That's what's going to happen to them. And they're going to suddenly realize, oh, what have I done? And then in the very next chapter, we have this 144,000 that show up, separate group, has nothing to do with any of that, but then a great multitude that no man can number. 
There's 2.7 billion Christians in the world today, roughly. So what if the 0.7 or even less than that disappeared? Well, you got another 2 billion plus that no man can number, which could suddenly come to faith. Because when you do the math on all the false doctrines and all the false beliefs and everything and what all the weird stuff people get into, when you when you go through all that and you take all that off that 2.7 billion, you get down to like 1 or 2%. I've done videos back in 2019 and 2020 about that. You get down to 1 or 2%, maybe less, because we don't know what's in people's hearts. Well, that sure sets the stage up for all that to happen. Amazing. So there's a purpose for the rapture, not only to rescue the church, but to wake the world up and say, hey, this is your big warning bell. Really bad things are about to happen. And God's going to give them this little, this little period of, of grace, this little time frame. <coughs> it's going to be the seals. As Jesus opens those seals, we're in the throne room watching him do it. Then they're going to realize. And then the bad stuff happens because the seventh seal starts the trumpets. And the trumpets are, to me, when I read it, the trumpets are the tribulation. The seals are just a little bit of time right before that or just a little bit of time right in the beginning. But the really bad stuff happens after the trumpets start. We can see people coming to these conclusions. We can see people starting to wake up to this stuff. We can see people looking back and they're like, why be? Go read her testimony. It was the morning devotion just, just yesterday, day before yesterday, from Isaiah 49, I think, or 46. I pinned it. I pinned the comment. And you read, she talks about how she struggled. But when she finally realized why am I hanging on to this? I got to let this go and let the Lord do his work. So she did. She took her hands off and just said, okay, Lord, this is all yours. And everything has changed since then. I have people, if you go back and look, you, you get to go through a lot of videos. I have over 4,000 videos. But you got to go through there and you have to look and see all the different comments where people had commented. And they said, um, this changed, that changed. I, I started looking at this. I started testing that. Everything that you say, I'm taking to the Bible. Now, this isn't to make me out to be something, but it's, they took the word at its face value and everything changed. And they started to realize that there's a big difference in what I used to be and what I am now. And so if we're going to say we walk in Christ, we have to show it. How do we show it? Go to the Bible. What does the Bible say about Jesus? What does Jesus say about Jesus? And then we mirror that. Now, we can't do it perfectly. Don't, don't misunderstand. We can sure go that direction and be more like him and show the salvation that is within us. Show the light that is within us. The Lord said, don't hide your light under a bushel. Put it on top so that everybody can see it. Be the Christian you're called to be. Be the Christians we're supposed to be so that the world can see it. So that they can see and know who we are. Because when the time comes for them to ask, they're going to come to you because they'll know you know the Bible and you know what you're talking about. And they will come ask you questions. Because what you tell them makes sense. It's when the Lord has granted them repentance. It'll make sense suddenly. See, the Bible doesn't make sense to anybody today. Everybody who's not saved, the Bible doesn't make sense. That's why they struggle. That's why they attack other people. That's why they go out there. Even if they, they say, they I know the Bible, you don't know anything. I can't tell you how many people have come here. Well, you don't know what you're talking about. I know the Bible. Uh, I tell them right off the bat. Well, first of all, you don't know the Bible. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here attacking me. Because if you did, you would know what kind of condemnation waits for somebody who attacks their brethren. Number two, and I always start going through the points. You, you, have, you have no idea what you're talking about. You don't know your scriptures. That's why you're doing what you're doing. Because if you knew them, you wouldn't do those things. Big difference between a false professor and an actual believer. So our state as believers should be to stand in what we know is true, the scriptures, and to do those things, to be about our Father's business, to, to register the change happening within us with external actions. 
If a man is prone to be a womanizer and an alcoholic and a drug user, after salvation he will give up the drugs, he will give up the alcohol, and he will not be a womanizer. He is going to change because those are the things, quite specifically, the Lord says, don't have anything to do with. Don't be a drunkard. Don't be prone to, to much wine. And flee sexual immorality and lusts. And so after salvation, that person is going to change. Those things are going to change about that person. And it will be notable. A person who is an incredibly pro prolific liar and a cheater of people on money, on anything. After salvation, we'll stop doing those things. We'll become vastly different. A person who does a lot of swearing will change vastly different after salvation. They will realize, I, I can't be talking like this. Now, again, they won't be perfect at it. None of, none of us are. But it, there will be notable changes in these people. Their light is shining bright. Because it's the Lord changing them. You can't help but express what he is doing within you externally. You can't help it. And so people won't like you for it. People won't want to be around you for it. But you know when the Lord opens their eyes, he'll send them to you. Because you have the words of truth. Because you have Christ within you. And he is truth. He is the word. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you praise, honor, and glory, and to lift you up and sing praises unto your holy name. Father, thank you for this word, and thank you for this devotion. Father, I thank you that I'm starting to listen to some of these teachers, and I'm starting to hear things that they're saying, things that I've been talking about for a couple of years now that you've shown me in the scriptures, and I hear them talking about them. And it is amazing. You're opening the eyes of those that are yours. It is glorious to witness. On a more important note, and something that aligns much more with uh, what we're talking about today, the manifestation of the change within us on the outside is starting to become very evident in those that are yours. They are starting to sh really show the change happening. With them. You are changing us more. You're doing more work in us. And so we're starting to become more of your children, more of your believers, more of your, your people. It's manifesting and we can't help it. And so consequently, people are going after us. Consequently, the, the world is turning against us. The world doesn't want anything to do with us. Amazing. Amazing. Consequently, the enemy comes and tries to attack us. Good luck. You're not going to win <laughs> at all. Father, I thank you that we have your word to teach us, the Holy Spirit within us to guide us and show us and teach us, and our Lord Jesus Christ always watching over us to steer us and direct us along the path, the narrow path of salvation. The narrow path is his book. The narrow path is his word. The narrow path is Jesus Christ. He is the path. He is the gate. And if we are walking that path, it should show, it should manifest. If a person is walking in the mud and then you line a bunch of people up, how are you going to know which one was walking in the mud? Well, the one that has mud on his boots, that's the one who was walking in the mud. Or the one who was walking in the sand. You need to line a bunch of people up. How do you tell which one was walking in the sand? There's sand all over and in his shoes. Hey, who's been in the field? None of us. Everybody line up. Oh, look, you've got them little sticker burrs all over your pants and shoes. You've been walking in the field. There's going to be evidence of where we're walking, evidence of who we are, evidence of what you're doing in us. And Lord, I pray you make it manifest more. I pray our light will shine brighter and stronger. I, I know what it's going to bring. I know what's going to happen because of it, but I would rather the world see it because then they'll have that recognition. Then they'll start to get that little twinge uh, of remembrance. And then when the time comes, Lord, when you take us, it's going to wake the whole world up. The world's going to be shocked. When all kinds of people just snap and they're gone, the world's going to be in shock because 
every one of them that has heard the message we've been spreading, they're going to go, wait a minute. I remember something about this. I remember the people that I came across that told me about Jesus Christ, that told me that there was that we were at the end times, that the, the rapture was about to happen, and those p same people are gone. No evidence of them anywhere. They're gone all around the world. What have I done? I've made a mistake, and they're going to come to you in repentance. Lord, make us to be your emissaries. Make us to be your light bearers. Make us to be your truth tellers. Not just speaking it, but living it, standing on the rock of truth and sharing anything we can with anybody, planting any seeds anywhere we can. It's getting hard now. It's getting real hard. <laughs> but, you know, our testimony, our life we live is also a, a evangelism tool. Just living as a Christian evangelizes others. They see it. They remember it. So, Lord, make us in every way possible to be your children, be your be your people. Be salt and light. And in all of this, it brings you glory. And Lord, we pray that it brings you glory. It brings honor and glory to your name and your kingdom. We also now, because of we're being changed, we also now wish that all men would be saved. We know all men won't, but at least we can do what we can while we're here. But, but the church age is coming to an end very quickly. We see that. We know that because of your word, because of the signs. Father, make us to do what we can while we can. Show us those open doors. Make us aware of it. And give us a word to share with those. If they'll listen, even if they won't, give us a word to share with them. A word that'll stick with them, a word that they will remember, and so whenever the time comes for that remembrance, that word will come back to come back to their memory, and they'll say, "I should have listened," and so that they will get saved. Because in your infinite mercy, in your infinite grace, in your infinite love, even throughout your entire time of wrath, you will still allow people to be saved. And what an amazing blessing! That even in the worst time the earth has ever seen or ever will see, there will still be saints on the earth, praising your name, glorifying you, even in your wrath. They will still be glorifying your name. All praise to you, Lord. Father, we thank you for your mercy and grace and your great love. We thank you for your free gift of salvation. In Jesus' name, we bless you, praise you, honor you, and glorify you. And in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. Guys, thank you for joining me for Morning Devotion. Be the Christian you're being made into. Be the Christian you say you are. Be the same person Saturday night that you are Sunday morning. Be the same person all the time. Be consistent so that people know what to expect from you. So that people, when other people tell lies about you, this happened to me fairly recently, the people hearing the lie will know, wait a minute, that's not quite right because I know this person. No, they'll, they'll know. In fact, I've had it happen a couple times. <laughs> I had somebody tell a lie about me, that something I said. And uh, other people very close to me heard it and were like, no, that doesn't sound right because that doesn't sound like him. Turned out it was completely false. They told a lie. I had another person believe somebody else on a, on a story of a certain series of events that happened. I was there for those events. And they said that person told this other person that uh, this is what was going on. And I looked at that person. And I said, when have you ever known me to do that ever? And they said, I've never known you to do that. I said, exactly. When people learn this is how this person is and somebody comes and tells them a tall tale, tells them a lie, they'll know, no, that's not him. That's not them. I don't, I don't believe what you say. Because they know who you are. This is what we do as Christians. We be the kind of people that they, they know. Really? She did what? No, that's not her. That's not her. That doesn't even sound like her at all. They'll be able to tell. The world will be able to tell. You're different.
And it can be something as simple as you doing a kind gesture to somebody in front of other people. It can be something as simple as I saw a gal, she was she had a bunch of kids in the car. She's parked right up in front of the door. The H-E-B was super busy. She stopped her cart and was loading the car right there. Me and my son were walking past. He had his, he had our cart. Police officer was sitting about a car length behind her, and he's tooting his horn. And or he, he hit his siren because her cart started rolling, and there was like tons of people in cars. Her cart started rolling. There was probably, if I if I had to guess, probably almost forty people standing there watching it, watching this cart roll out into traffic. I ran. I was further away than anybody. I ran and grabbed it because you could tell she was really distracted because of these kids. Not a single person made any move to help her. A couple people took their phones out to film it because they wanted to see an accident. So they could put it on social media and get some likes. The first thing I thought of was I got to stop this thing because somebody's going to get hurt because the way those cars were coming through there, they'd have hit that thing. But you know, every single one of those people that saw that We'll remember that when the time comes. I saw somebody do this. You inadvertently become different and stand out from the rest of the world just by you being the believer you are. Without you even trying, you inadvertently be that person. You inadvertently expose yourself by how you interact with others and, and what you do. Without even trying, our light shines brightly. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name, and I'll see you in the next video.